God bless you and shalom, beloved ones. Greetings from Rabbi Schneider. Most of all, grace and peace to you from God our Father and Yeshua and Jesus the Messiah. Beautiful day today. We're going to be going to the Word of God. I'm going to be reading now from the book of Titus, chapter 2, verses number 11 and 12. Just a little thought to focus on this week. Hear the Word of God. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us. Listen, the salvation that has appeared to us brings instruction. And here's what this instruction is. Bringing instruction to us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in this present age. Listen to what the Lord said. When salvation appeared, revelation came into our hearts from heaven. And the revelation is this, that we should live godly lives. Listen, denying ungodliness and worldly desires to live sensis, sensibly, righteously, and godly lives. You see, unfortunately, the gospel that many are hearing today is a gospel that feeds the flesh, but doesn't instruct people how to live godly lives and deny worldly desires. But Jesus said, the first thing that Jesus said was, unless you repent, you will perish. Did you realize that? John the Baptist's first words were these, unless you repent, you will perish. He came speaking, a, 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 a calling people to a repentance to prepare them for the kingdom of God. And then when Jesus arrived on the scene, his first words were, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And so the salvation that Titus tells us about in Titus 2 that's appeared to us instructs us to deny ungodly desires and to live sensible and godly lives. I want to encourage you today, beloved. The gospel that has been preached, the true gospel that the apostles delivered to us is a gospel that involves sacrifice. It involves the sacrifice of doing what we want to do, which is indulging in the desires of our flesh and in the things of the world. We deny ourselves those things that would take us outside of Jesus and His cause. And instead what we do is we obey Him, even when it means sacrificing what we want to do to obey Him. And the result is, beloved, that when Jesus appears, every single tear that you shed for Him, because you sought to do His will, in other words, every time that you stayed home and did nothing, when you were invited to go out to do something that was ungodly, whether it was going to see a movie at the movie theater that you knew would bring him displeasure, whether it was switching the channel on television, even though you wanted to watch a program, but you knew that watching that program really was something that would bring disgust to God because it was all about the lust of the flesh and the things of the world. Every time you made a decision to obey him instead of doing what you wanted to do, you know what? Jesus stored up all those tears, and when he appears, you are going to be rewarded in such a way that the Bible says this, that eye is not seen and ear is not heard, and neither has it ever even entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him. I want you to know, beloved, Jesus loves you. He's coming back soon, and his reward is with him for you. So stay the course. Be encouraged. Truly, it won't be long before you and I meet him face to face. I love you, beloved. Share this with a friend.